Hey guys, and welcome back. Well, you're in for a special treat today. We're going to look at a guest tutorial about sculpting in ZBrush by Henry Shervenka, a two-time MA Tutorial Challenge winner. Okay, here we go. This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey everyone, I hope your day is going well. My name is Henry Shervanka, and I'll be hanging out with you today inside ZBrush. I thought it would be pretty cool to show you guys how I would go about creating a sci-fi helmet. And since I don't want this to be a really long video, I've split this up into different stages so you don't have to sit there and watch me sculpting away for hours. So let's begin. So the first thing we need to do is press the append button here in the tool palette and click on the sphere 3D. It comes in very large, but that's okay. Press the E key for scale and drag out your transpose line. Click on the furthest circle and drag in until the sphere is roughly the size of the head. Now press W for move and click the middle circle to move the sphere over. Be sure to look from all angles. To be completely certain you have the head inside the sphere, you can check by pressing the transparency button located in the transform palette. Now that we have it in place, we need to dynamesh it. Here's the reason why. Sphere has poles on the top and the bottom, which is just horrible for sculpting. Dynamesh will retopologize the sphere so it contains nice, evenly spaced polygons all around. This is so much better for sculpting. Now that this is dynameshed, we can grab our move brush, adjust the focal shift, and the brush size, and then start forming the basic shapes of the helmet. After 5 to 10 minutes of using the move brush, this is the shape I ended up with. Nothing too extreme, but it's a good starting point. As you can see, it is one polygroup, and it's dynameshed. We will begin by using the slice brushes to create our polygroups. To select the slice brush, hold Ctrl and Shift, then click on the brush panel over here where you can choose whichever one you prefer. We will start out with the slice circle. Press Ctrl and Shift and drag. To move the slice brush, hold the space bar, release the keys when you want to make your selection, and a new polygroup has been created. If you're working with symmetrical meshes, it's always a good idea to mirror and weld your polygroups. The mirror and weld feature lives in the tool palette under geometry inside Modify Topology. Next is the Slice Curve Brush. By holding Ctrl and Shift, drag out your line. Tap Alt to create a curve. Double tap Alt to create a sharp angle. When you release everything inside the gradient, it will become a new polygroup. We will grab the slice circle again and make some polygroups where the ears might be. Dragging out the size I want and then holding spacebar to move the selection where I need it. For our last slice brush, we'll try out the slice rectangle. Not too much to explain here. Control and shift, space to move, release the keys to make the selection. Another method to create polygroups is with masking. One of my personal favorites. For this, I will adjust the focal shift to create a sharp edge on my mask. Then, I'll paint in my mask by holding down Control. When I'm done painting the mask, I will press Control W and the mask area will become its own polygroup. However, you end up with this terrible stepping in between the two polygroups. One way to fix this is to select the Smooth Groups brush located in Lightbox. By holding down the shift key, you will see that the stepping will smooth itself out. Another cool thing you could try is adding an alpha to your mask. It's a great way to get creative. So, hold control, click on the alpha panel to select an alpha, then 
click on the stroke panel and choose drag rectangle and you can see what happens now when I press the control key and drag one thing I like to do is go to masking the tool palette and sharpen it up a little bit this way the poly groups will come in better when I press control W now I will quickly go over it with the smooth groups brush and do a mirror and weld to wrap up stage two we'll grab the slice curve brush once more and make a selection around the poly groups that were already made when released you will notice that a new poly group is created while retaining the older ones just something to take note of when you're laying out your groups okay now that we have all the poly groups laid out here comes the really cool part this is where you'll start to see the model come to life so under geometry inside edge loops you will see panel loops and group loops we'll try panel loops out first I'm gonna turn down the thickness quite a bit around 0 0.001 and change the loops down to 4 there is a good number of settings you can adjust so take some time and play around with them I'm also gonna turn off the poly groups so you can see this effect better so panel loops gave us bevels on the poly group borders and separated out each poly group into its own independent island with the move topological brush we can move each poly group without affecting the others. This to me is such an awesome feature, especially for hard surface. I'm going to go ahead and move the undo slider back to the beginning so we could take a look at group loops. For this particular model, I prefer using group loops over panel loops as group loops does not separate out each poly group. With a simple click of the poly groups button, you will notice ZBrush gave us four poly loops around each poly group border. The next step is to move these poly groups independently. So this modifier can be found under the brush palette. I'm just going to go ahead and dock the whole brush palette over to the left. If you scroll down to auto masking, you will see the mask by poly group slider at the very top. I'm going to crank the slider all the way to 100. Now with the move brush selected, turning off poly groups for a better illustration you will notice that it is only affecting the poly group that your pen or mouse is hovering over and since we group loop the model the geometry is coming out nice and crisp exactly what I'm looking for when creating hard surface detail also if I press alt when using the move brush I will be able to pull or push the geometry by its normals instead of the camera angle let's say I want to show part of the face I can delete the poly group and then reveal what's underneath but I can already see a problem the helmet is way too far away from the face it's an easy fix though just move the mass by poly group slider to zero this will allow you to adjust the entire mesh I'm going to go ahead and close in the sides, move the bottom closer to the chin, bring in the visor and move it down slightly so it covers more of the nose. Now we can slide the mass by poly groups back up to 100 and continue developing our helmet. The brush size will be important for how much of the poly group you move. Take your time, see what shapes work for you. As you can see, in very little time, we have some good forms and shapes created. You can always go back and create more polygroups and continue to redefine your model. I went ahead and continued to push and pull polygroups until I was satisfied with the results. Just try and explore different shapes without going overboard. The model is still DynaMesh and I haven't Z-remeshed it yet since I'm still in my concepting phase.
So the next step is to try to add more details to the helmet. One way to do this is to use the Insert Multi-Mesh Brush. ZBrush ships with quite a few impressive IMM brushes. The one we will start out with is IMM Train. Pressing M on the keyboard will open up the Insert Mesh Selections. This one comes with a lot of already pre-made trains. However, for this example, I will select a diamond pattern. I'm going to go ahead and position the model and drag out the insert mesh. When I finish, you will notice the underlining mesh will auto mask. By default, the IMM will lay flat. However, I would like it to deform to the shape of the helmet. So a cool feature we could use is located in the brush palette under modifiers called projection strength. I'll bump the slider all the way to 100. Now when I drag the insert mesh on the helmet, it will follow the curvature exactly. You can place this IMM anywhere and it will deform to the mesh underneath. It is such a cool feature and saves me so much time compared to, for to deforming it manually. So let's check out another IMM brush. This time let's pick IND parts. Press M for the pop-up and let's choose this Phillips head screw. You can go ahead and start placing the Phillips head screw all over your model. Anywhere you like. If you want to mix it up, you can choose different screws or bolts and start placing them wherever you see fit. Another cool tip when dealing with IMM brushes is exact size placement. I can manually drag out each pipe try to match the size but they will not be exact so instead I'll drag it out and before I release I'll hold control this will snap the mesh to your brush size let's go ahead and increase the brush while trying the control key again. Notice how each mesh is snapping to the same size. This makes life so much simpler. Finally, let's take a look at the curve brushes. Press M for the pop-up and let's pick pose 2 for this example. Drag out your curve, and when you release, the hose will follow the curve you laid out. Clicking on the circles at the end will move the hose along the underlining mesh. When you increase or decrease your brush size and click on the curve, the hose will automatically adjust accordingly. Let's say you want to increase the length of the curve. All you need to do is hover over the end of the curve until you see that small red line appear. Simply drag out a line and the hose will lengthen. In order to manipulate the fall off of the curve when moving it, hover over the hose until you see your brush turn blue. Then press spacebar to increase or decrease the size of the brush. Now let's say you want to delete the curve. Just single click on the mesh and you are ready to draw out another curve. One final and important tip. Let's say you want to only move one end of the curve without the other end being affected. You can find this feature in the stroke palette. Under curve, click lock start and lock end. Now when you move the curve, the end you do not choose to move will remain stationary. This could be very helpful in many different situations. Well, that wraps it up for the IMM stage of the helmet. 
So this is what I ended up with after placing some insert meshes around the helmet. A few fasteners here and there. Curve hoses wrapping around the shoulder. Diamond plates inside the recesses. Trying to keep it as basic as I can for the first pass. After this stage, I would go ahead and do some quick texturing and material breakups. Just to give me an idea where to take it for the second pass. Unfortunately, I will not be able to show you the texturing stage. That by itself is another full length video. Also, during the end of the first pass, I'm thinking about what can be improved, which elements I want to keep for the final. I'm also searching for more references to spark new ideas. I will also throw it into key shots to see how it handles under different lighting setups. Or you can just render it real quick inside ZBrush. Well, that is all I have for you guys in this video. I hope everyone had a good time hanging out with me inside ZBrush. This was definitely not a beginner's tutorial. But I hope you learned a cool tip. Or at the very least, enjoyed watching the process for concepting inside ZBrush. Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.